So once you once you've got your support plan ready, is when then you would want to ask for a case manager to come, and um, you know from the local health authority. Uh, there's an intake process. Sorry, is that where we're at right now? Yeah, I was just going to ask you about that actually. So, uh, so the, you know there is an intake process. Uh, there's a phone number you call. Um, and you, you you start off on the telephone. So if you've never been on home support before, there's a number that they call and it, it, they triage you, right? Basically. Okay. So when you make that phone call, you need to be very clear that you want to see a case manager, right? Right. right. Um, you know, because there will be questions over the phone uh, to see if you're eligible for home support or not, right? So are you living with your family? Is your family doing it for you now? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. You may actually not get to a case manager, actually. So good. you need to be really yeah. clear that you need personal care and that you need mm -hmm. to be a case manager to come and assess me for that care. So you need to be very clear. That's, that's a really good point, especially for someone who is moving from uh, the, the minimum age is 19. Right, right. exactly. So that's a really good example because, you know, you, you that that particular person to have it on their own, it was, it was part of the family, right? Right. So for someone who's new, coming in, looking at TESOL from that standpoint, you yeah. really had to deal with that. Sort of Absolutely. And, you know, and transitional-wise, you know, a lot of people ask us, when is the best time to start mm -hmm. the transition process? You know, once you're turning 18, start working on this stuff, right? Right. Uh, well, you know, where it gets, where you can get to getting the hours and stuff is probably when you get more to closer to the 19, right? But at least right. you would have started the process and that you're on the on the radar and then they can start working with you. Um, so w when you meet with the case manager, you're going to be able to prevent your support plan, right? Um, but they're going to present their tool, which is the time task analysis. Right. And we have a copy of that, don't we, yep. uh, Fernando? Yep. So give me one second. I will so, this is taking all of the hard work that you did on spending all the time developing your supported lifestyle plan, looking at your 24-hour day. Now, what the case most case managers are willing to take that support plan you provide them mm -hmm. and actually go and fill this out for you in some cases. Uh, but many also need, require you to do it yourself. But what helps here is that you've already done it in a format that makes sense to you. Right. So, um, you know, uh, this is coming from a document called uh, the Cecil Employer Package through the Fraser Health Authority. Vancouver Coastal Health has one as well, and all the health authorities have a package. Okay. Um, and it's a, it's a daunting package of about 50 pages or so, right. so don't get overwhelmed with it. Take one section at a time, that kind of thing. So I, I've kind of gone into this time task analysis here. And with this time task analysis, they, they they pretty much have the four questions along the top, which is uh, uh, task. Um, what is? Oh, I guess you know. If you go down lower, it's really more in this format. Go down a bit further. Let's go to the next page. Okay. This is it's a blank one, but these this is really how it's done. Is uh, time of day, uh, the tasks performed. So what is the task? Uh, time required in minutes uh, as currently performed by whom? Okay, good. Um, and then the case manager. Now, some time task analysis just put down. Uh, it doesn't have time of day. It says wash, uh, urinate. You would write urination, and then it say how many times do you urinate oh, in I a see. day? I see. Okay. But by the because you did your support lifestyle plan, you'll just go through and put okay, urination. Takes me, you know, ten minutes. Right. Oh, and I see that I put it down seven times, and now you could just write seven times, you know, ten. It will it equals seventy minutes, right? So, the, the, you know, uh, Fraser Health does it this way, which is more similar to our support lifestyle plan, really. It's a time, you know, a time of day, right? And then a task and the time required. So, you know, this currently performed. Um, you know, um, you know, is so if you're, you know, 18 years old, obviously your mom may or dad or a member may be doing it, um, or someone mm -hmm. that's helping you out is doing it. So you'd write that down. I would always put down very clearly, you know, mom but want Carrie to do this, or 
you know, let's be clear, right? You know, uh, so that you could be really clear about it. So I, I would divide that uh, square in half. So currently mom, gotcha. right? But on the other side, you know, uh, care aid, right? Right, is what you would expect, who you're hoping to have do it, right? That, you know, because like, remember, you're, you're justifying why mom's not going to do it anymore later, right? But you want to be clear that mom can't continue doing it, so that's why you're writing on the other side, carry. Right. But if, you know, but if mom is still going to make dinner, then you put mom on one half and then put mom still on the other half if mom is still able to do the dinner for you. Okay. Kind of thing, if that's, right. your, if that's your situation, right? Right, right. Yeah. So we're modifying their document a tiny bit, but okay. it's about being clear. Okay. okay. So again, like I said, the time, time tasks are a little in each of the health authorities. So how does someone find uh, this document or uh, the package that you talked about? Because if all the health authorities have a slightly different one, who should they be contacting? Um, they could contact me because we would have access to getting access to all of them. Okay. Um, and uh, con my contact information will come up later near the end. Uh, but you can always ask me for it. But ultimately, uh, each of the health authorities, uh, you can just request it. Right. Um, and that you would request a time task analysis uh, form. Can you do um, it online? Can you go out and find these uh, this particular information? Or good you know? question. I, no, no, no. Is I have not been able to see them online at this point. Okay. But um, it's our hope that we're going to start seeing them more online so that people can be more prepared, right? Um, I know through our website we're eventually going to have it online, so people okay, good. Can have access okay. to it. Our website's not up and running yet, but we want to have these documents really accessed and. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I think the health authorities would like to do that too. They just haven't thought about it yet. Um, ultimately, too, they want to make sure that people really understand how to use these documents too. But since you all have talked to me about it and us on this great webinar, uh, you guys are ready to roll with it. And yeah. so being prepared before you meet with the case manager is a good idea. Perfect. Okay. So should we move on? Yes, we should. Okay. So Absolutely. where are we at here? Let's just do um, We are... See, we talked about a little bit about. Um, do, should we finish up a little bit about what the case manager? There's a couple of things, you know, presenting your plan. So we presented the plan, emphasize so, you understand. So then there was the assessment tool, which was the time task analysis. Okay. That we okay. just talked about. Right. Uh, here, and and being really clear, but that you understand your support needs, right? Which By means, going through the support plan like we just did, you are presenting that you understand your needs. Right. right. Okay. So by pre right. pre presenting them the, the ten page or twenty page document mm -hmm. that you have with, you know, and be able to talk about it because, you know, it you know, present it, but they're going to have lots of questions about it. Right. Will they have questions at that first meeting they present it? Maybe not as many as they will in the next meeting that they have. Gotcha. They'll be ready to talk about it. Uh, we flip in here that twenty four hour live ins are possible. Uh, uh, it's kind of a. a uh, th this is in regards to people that receive enough home support hours can actually turn the support hours into 24 hours of support. So you can pay somebody a flat rate gotcha. of maybe $200 or $250 or $300 per 24 hour shift. And the employment standards allows you to do a flat rate. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. so, gen idea, so, so, so generally, for a lot of people that need nighttime care, for example, and, and and support throughout the day. I'm using the word care, by the way, and I don't. Uh, it's a habit, I think, but I don't like the word care. I should say that, Fernando. Yeah. So I apologize for those that don't like the word care either. Uh, I don't need someone to care for me. I know me. What word? Do you uh, like I need to support. I, I prefer support. personal assistance, right? I don't like care aids. Oh, care. I see. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. yeah. really my personal assistant, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, and that's how I refer to them usually. And yeah, we uh, generally refer but, to attendants. But but people stand care, yes. right? So yeah. I, I apologize for anyone that might be offended saying that because I know some people don't like that. Right. But uh, in regard, so the twenty four hour support. So you, you need you know to do twenty four hour systems. So Fernando, you need a minimum, very very minimum of eight, eight hours of. Home support, right? Well, that's at the very minimum, and that's only, and that's only if you maybe need to be rolled once in the night, or something, right? Because 
later see at the budget, right? Yes. Um, you'll see how much you can afford and stuff. Right. So we'll talk more about scheduling later. I, I, I we put it there, but uh, it's because a lot of people were asking us about the need for 24 hour, and I know you and I didn't want to forget about that at all. So yes, 24 hour support is possible. Um, but into more detail. Yeah. Um, where are we next? So uh, we're just talking a little bit more about the case manager because we you mentioned right. a number of times about educating the case manager, but and I think that point is more specific about educating the case manager about your needs, e not exactly around not your needs, needs um, you know, and really making them understand mm -hmm. all the different components that you have going on mm -hmm. in your life. Um, you know, uh, but, but also educate some case managers are more familiar with the CISO yes. program too. Than others, so I know we refer to it in both cases. You know, making sure they understand your needs, but also, you know, you know, by you actually going through the modules through the Spinal Cord Injury BC website, uh, which, by the way, is a, actually in, in many of the health authorities now yes. a requirement, um, and uh, to to go on to the CISO program. So, especially if you're a young person, right? They they expect that you would have gone through the different modules and stuff, and um, yeah, so they're linked over on a lot of the um, a lot of the websites. So yeah, I've seen it quite a few times from multi health. And, so. and, and each health authority um, deals with things differently. Yes. Um, you know, at the bottom of this list talks about a questionnaire. Right. Uh, each of the health authorities may have a questionnaire for you. Okay. And that questionnaire usually comes out of some of the modules that we okay. provided. Right. So you can get all the answers through through those questions through our uh, through our uh, modules, for sure. But and and you know they're not trick questions or anything like that. But there are some questions there. I just want to make sure that you're prepared, also. All right. So exactly. Exactly. Um. Uh. So. Um, so and again, so you're you know the case manager has to support your request, right? Um, so what does that mean? So meaning that you know uh, that you've been able to demonstrate that you are able to you know direct your own care, for example, okay. right? Because um, if you're not able to uh, tell people what your needs are, yeah. uh, then yeah. it would be very difficult for you to operate well under the CISO program. So right. basically a stamp of approval? Right. Exactly. Awesome. Exactly. Okay. Uh, okay. If getting hours... I think uh, is, about that. Yeah, a little we have. Yep. Um, okay. So uh, backup plan. We'll talk, uh, we'll talk a, bit a, bit a little bit as well. And we talked a little bit about the questionnaire. Okay. So, okay. Uh, what do we have here? So, so I guess okay, these, so this is right. Area. So these are just things to be thinking about. Right. Um, you know, uh, we've some of these we've talked about already, but we'll, we'll look at them again because they're really important points. This is no. This part here is about uh, questions or. or uh, the, it's the case manager's responsibility to let you know what all the options are. Right. Mm -hmm. And even some of the options are options you don't want to hear about. Um, you know, some people don't, most of us don't want to hear about an extended care facility. No. But quite often your case manager will ask you about that and would you consider going into a specific care facility right. because you'll be able to get more support there and, yes. stuff, and, they would, and they would describe that. So everyone has their own opinion. My mother was in a nursing home for quite a few years and I used to visit her frequently. Right. And, and you know, and a care facility isn't my, my, was something I would opt into either. Um, and I think that's what's important here for, for what you're saying is that be clear about it out, but that's not an option for you if it's not. Mm -hmm. You can't be independent. Um, and, it can and be really depressing having someone that is made to do that. And, and you can't be forced into a, uh, a facility or a group home against your will, you know. Uh, uh, so that's something to be really aware of. Uh, we talked about Meals on Wheels in regards to food and stuff. We talked about that. Volunteers um, as, you know, uh, you know, what about getting a volunteer to help you with this or that? Uh, you need to talk about why, you know, certain things cannot be done by a volunteer. Right. Right. Um, you know, they're not paid, so they don't have to show up, for example. If it's something that's going to really be detrimental to your life, then a volunteer may not be the option for you. But, you know, uh, finding someone to help you do some little things may mm -hmm. be a good idea. I mean, it, it puts, 
plant that seed also that, you know, of, of things that you can start thinking about that you hadn't necessarily thought about before, such as right. the whole volunteer. Or uh, going to the point that Meals on Wheels, we had talked a little bit about grocery shopping. You know, yes. it's, it's In the larger centers, it's it's uh, it's a lot easier now. It's actually moving you know, on a broader scale also about purchasing your groceries online and having them delivered to your right. door, you know. I'm not going to promote it, but, you know, there's a website that I use for some things, and um, you know, they're pretty good. The prices are mm -hmm. they're okay, but when you... You have to take in other things also because, you know, their prices are a little more expensive. But I need a vehicle to get to the grocery store. It's going to cost me my time. It's going to cost me some gas to get there, you know. And then I have to put up with the people that are at the store. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so so sometimes you look at those costs for things like Spud, you know, on uh, Spud.ca <laughs> online, and you say, whoa, you know, that, that lettuce is, you know, uh, quite a bit more. But when you end up taking all the other costs when you have to yeah. do it personally yeah, or your yeah. tenant has to do it, you know, and, not that bad. Yeah, and and then we just have to recognize that everybody's in their situation, right? So even Meals on Wheels sounds like a great option, but it cannot. For some people, it's just not affordable. Yes, uh, no, so because it's, it's, it's a great, great program. It actually yes. is a great program mm -hmm. for some people. It's not not for all. Not for all. But it also has to be. You know, is it in your budget? Can you afford to be able mm -hmm. to do that? Um, and even the uh, you know the ordering online and stuff too. You know, when you're on disability income and stuff, every penny, every penny we're watching, right? Yep. And so that's not an easy thing yep. to deal with. And I want to recognize that um, it's not always the justifiable answer to your case manager, but it is an answer, you yes. know, to some. So be aware of that. Uh, also, the Meals on Wheels may not provide the kind of dietary needs that you have, and so be aware of that. And then you can describe why maybe Meals on Wheels may not work for you or. Or if it does work for you, great too. Um, um, you know, the most we can provide is four hours a day. We've talked about that before. That seems to be something that uh, is a myth that everybody tends to hear about. We were myth busting last time, weren't we? A little bit, yep. You know, and you know, it's not true. Uh, people are getting uh, 10, 12, 14 hours a day. Um, it's not something that's regularly gotten, but if you can show your needs and really be able to describe it, and um, in some cases you may have to take it and uh, do a little more political stuff with it right. too, right? But right. Um, people are getting more hours. Uh, but I, I want to believe that if you provide the right information to the case managers and make your case, it would be my hope that you get the hours that you want or need. But you've got to start, right? You can't. Yes. You can't just go flying to the media or flying to uh, the politicians and stuff and saying, hey, they're not giving me 12 hours a day or 14 hours a day. Well, did you ask for it to start with? No, not yet. But I know they're going to say no. Mm -hmm. Well, no, that's not good enough. You've got to ask for it. Yeah, that's right. So, well, I think the next point there is, uh, I think there's a typo because I see it on yours. So it says, uh, <laughs> if, uh, if we give you eight hours, we can't give you four uh, oh, I see. Oh, yeah, that's a typo. So, oh, so that one is, um, you know, some people have told us about, um, you know, if I give you eight hours a day, I can't give two or four hours to a senior. Oh, right. 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 So, but, they actually do um, that? but you know, like so no so there's some ha oh, there God. some case managers have used that yes. line before, and you know that's not an appropriate line, no, it's not of course. Um, but you know that's okay. You know, I mean, you know, but you you it's not okay. No. But, but, you know, Being your situation, by the way, yeah. is your situation. Yeah. Uh, all yeah. you can worry about is what your needs are. Yeah, that's right. And all you, I mean, as much as I care about all the other people, you have to care about your situation and, yeah. and present yourself about your situation. Mm -hmm. So Definitely. if they bring that forward or something like that, uh, you know, it's not appropriate. I don't they've done research to uh, show that it's a lot cheaper for the healthcare system keep people in their home and put them in an institution. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot of research lot out of there. there. Uh, that's another show altogether because I think there's so, yeah. a, a great research out there. Yeah. Um, in, in regards to, you know, things like our health authority, it does not have the same money as another health authority. I'm using Vancouver right. as an yeah. example. You know, um, you know, some people have heard, you know, don't come from Vancouver to, you know, uh, Burnaby. Right. You know, if you do right. that, we're not going to give you the same yes. hours as you get in Vancouver. You know, right. uh, you know, we have a Ministry of Health policy, and the policy is that the system is supposed to be offered the same throughout the province, 
no matter where you live. So um, that is something that obviously we're not always seeing, of course. Yep. Um, some people have told us they made a phone call and they've been told, don't come this way. So those are real, real situations and a real concern. Mm -hmm. And you know what? If that's happening to you, we want to know about it. And as a resource center, I would like to know about it so that we mm -hmm. can help with those situations because that's not appropriate. So what about the next point there? It says, is it asking you to do a transfer in front of them? I mean, that's... Yeah. What's that? You know, that's, uh, you know, we talked earlier about justifying right. your needs. And, yeah. uh, you know, did you document it well enough, one thing. Um, and sometimes even when you document it well enough, there's a, uh, the case manager will ask an occupational therapist to come in oh, okay. to okay. do the transfer right. or do certain parts of the care. Right. Um, and that is something that they are allowed to do. Okay. Uh, you know, question. and, um, you know, it's something that, uh, you know, the, it doesn't mean they need to see your personal mm -hmm. stuff, you know. Um, you when they know, come into but, your home and ask But they will to... come into your home. Uh, you know, personally, I had mine done recently um, with an occupational therapist, mm -hmm. and, uh, and she was very respectful in regards to staying outside of the bathroom, for yes. example. Um, but really, for her, she was just wanting to kind of turn on the clock and see how long it took. You know, right. kind of thing to do certain things. Okay. Uh, okay. So especially when you're asking for a transfer that takes 30 minutes. Yes. Right? Let's, I'm being exaggerating now, right? But it's, if you say that a transfer takes you 30 minutes yes. to do, uh, and they only allow 10 minutes, you know, they need to come and see it, you know, to understand it. You I know, see. I see. Um, we would hope that we can just give a written description, but in some cases that's a, quite a bit beyond the allowable allowance that they provide. But if they come, hopefully that they will come and they can see it and stuff. Um, will they try to talk you into doing it differently? Mm -hmm. Perhaps. And um, that's, uh, you know, part of the process too, isn't it? And, yes. And you needing to stay strong. If it is the right way for you, you need to be able to really be strong about the way you need to start care to be done. Definitely. Um, and, you know, uh, you know, and we, you know, and again, uh, we, we expect case managers to be professional. There's no doubt about it. But there are some case managers that we've seen that haven't been as mm -hmm. professional. Opening closed doors without your permission, mm -hmm. you know, going into your fridge or going yeah. into your cupboards and stuff, you know. Uh, you know, and you know, in some cases you you're thinking maybe they're in a situation where they're just worried about your your dietary needs and things like that, but uh, respect, right? It's still about being respectful. And, and uh, I know that the health authorities don't want to see case managers respectful to individuals. Yeah, so uh, if that is happening, we should be aware, made aware of it. And it's your, it's your right to bring that forward if case managers are not being appropriate. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, health authorities are expecting that case managers are professional. If they ask you if they can go in a certain a cupboard or a fridge and you really don't want them to, and you say no? You can say no, and then they should respect that, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and again, it just depends on what the the reasons are for yeah. it, right? You know, um, uh, but you know, ultimately, if you say no, no is no, right? 